Hello, and welcome back to Radiant Dawn, 0% gross. We're on chapter 3, 5. Last chapter, Shinon was our MVP once again, so... Yay! Uh, we got... Oops, that's not what I wanted to show off. Um, I We got him up to 99 XP, but, like, literally that consumed all of the... The remaining XP that I had, so it was it's just as well that he got as many kills as he did. Like I, I think he got one extra kill beyond the what he needed to hit level 17. Um, especially since he will not have uh, many opportunities for kills in the coming chapter. So he definitely is not going to get to level 19 this chapter. He'll just have to settle for being somewhere in level 18. Um, other than that, uh, we've got one new unit to talk about, and that is Rayson. We get a Heron again, yay! Um, so I probably talked about Rayson when I talked about Raphael, I would guess, I don't really remember. Um, but yeah, I mean, Rayson is Heron, Herons are always great. Um, you know, you can talk about the comparisons between them, but given that until the tower, you don't, you know, you, you can only use one at any given time. You don't have a choice between them, it doesn't doesn't so much matter. What does matter is that, obviously, being able to chant is awesome, uh, especially for trying to get a low turn count um, and trying to take advantage of, you know, your your best units, which you're going to have fewer of in 0% growth. Um, obviously, when transformed, Rayson can chant for four people, which is amazing. Um, that, uh, you know, enables some... Uh, is significant acceleration of chapters, of course, and is a little bit easier to set up uh, in Radiant Dawn than in Path of Radiance just because we've got more Lagoose Stones, so that's nice. Um, yeah, he's got, for what it's worth, he's higher level than uh, than Leanne. I actually don't remember what Raphael's level is, but I, Leanne's like level 3 or something. Um, but. The point is, he has better stats than they do, which is mostly relevant in the sense that he can actually take a hit. I mean, you don't want him to, obviously, but he can do it. Um, he's got, like, 40 HP is actually like, oh, that's not too bad. 22 transform speed is like, well, he won't get doubled by things in general when he's transformed. 12 transform defense is like, not trash. Um, 34 transform resistance is crazy. Uh... <laughs> You know, I mean, again, you don't want him to be attacked. Although, I guess the one exception to that is uh, if you have a situation where he can easily survive an attack and he's not transformed yet, you can use that to charge his gauge. Like, particularly against mages. Um, like, if a mage has, you know, like, 20-something attack, like, they're going to double him. They're going to do, like, maybe half his health in damage if they hit twice, which they may well not because he has pretty good avoid because he has so much luck. Um, but then, you know, that's going to charge up his gauge and enable him to transform faster. So if you're not otherwise using a Lulu Stone anyway to transform him, that can be uh, something that comes up maybe occasionally. It, it usually doesn't, but it's it's something. Um, other than that, uh, there was yet more skill shuffling. Uh, I put, let's see, Pass is now on Racin and on... Titania. Oscar has now got Savior. I put Provoke on Shinon. Uh, Adept is back on Mia. I guess that's about it. Um, yeah. And then uh, the other thing to mention is I gave a an energy drop. We had one energy drop uh, in the convoy. Um, from... I want to say this is the one that we got from the Armor Knight in 2E. Anyway, uh, I gave that to Har, um, and I'll show off why when we get into the chapter. Um, but basically, like, we were... Like, I needed exactly two more damage, and it's between Har and Titania, and while Titania has higher strength to begin with, and there's something to be said for concentrating resources into a single character. The fact is, Har is faster and is a flyer, so I think overall it, it just makes more sense to, to give it to Har. Anyway, um, yeah, I think that's all there is to cover here.
Um, so, yeah, here we are on Chapter 3-5. This is a defense map, um, but you can also kill the boss, who is down here, to end the chapter early. That's, of course, what we are going to be endeavoring to do. Um, we've got a lot of deployment slots. We can't deploy any of our Lagoos characters except for uh, Rayson. But, like, they, these are, like, all part of the Lagoos army, and for story reasons, they're not available. Uh, but we can deploy everybody else except for one, um, which is honestly, like, overkill. But uh, we do end up using most of the characters in some capacity. But, um, yeah, the one we're not deploying is Ileana. Uh, and um, what else is there to mention? Uh, Lombroso has an energy drop, so we're going to get our energy drop back, essentially. Um from him, and that's really, like, part of what makes clearing this chapter tricky uh, in the two turns that I am targeting, because getting Heather down here and stealing the energy drop uh, adds some complexity to the situation. But, um, it, it, well, and it's basically the reason why I gave the energy drop to Har. So, I mean, I guess you could argue, like, that... Um, you know, it's kind of a wash, like, you spend an energy drop, gain an energy drop, but we get plus two strength on R for the deal, so, I mean, like, that's not a bad person to give the energy drop to, anyway. Um, alright, I think, I think we're ready to go here. So, uh, what we need to do, uh, first is have Gatchery come over here and shove Heather... And then we need to shove Heather with Mist. And then we need to shove Heather with Brom. And then she that is going to put her in a position after she runs down here. Where we're going to have Har come down and take this guy out with a hammer. And then Kanto over here. So the reason we're doing this is... I'll just go ahead and show this off. Boyd is going to come over and shove Nephany forward. Nephany is basically trying to to block... Um, oh, yeah, I gave Smite to Nephany. It's totally unnecessary, but I did it... Uh, actually, let's just unequip this. It doesn't even matter. Um, I gave it to Nephany Smite for like a different approach that I was trying at one point. Anyway, basically, we want to block this guy from reaching Grayson, uh, who's going to come down and pop a Lagoose Stone. But the guy here would be able to reach Grayson regardless of Nephany being in the way here. And if both of them are here and alive, then Nephany dies. To, they, they can deal enough damage to her. Um... And, uh... We want to be able... But we want to be able to trade Har a Hand Axe... And we also want to rescue Heather with Oscar for next turn. So we need Heather all the way down here so that we can uh, come down, rescue Heather, trade Har, a Hand Axe. Um, and the reason we need to trade Har a Hand Axe is because if we don't, this guy will come up and attack Har, and then, like, that will uh, cause problems with where we can arrange our units for next turn. Um, whereas if, if this guy... Well, what he's going to do is attack Titania. So Titania is going to come through here and blow this guy up. And now we're going to come down and trade our hand axe. Rescue Heather. Uh, Oscar currently has Savior. Um, so yeah, the basically, the big problem is that this guy right here will like just make a beeline across and will be in this column. Like, it would be easier to have Har here, and then he can fly straight down, kill this guy, fly back up, get chanted, and then we can, like, open the way to the boss. But the problem is, this guy will, like, run across and block, and so Har needs to get around him. It's easier to get around him if we're to one, one side or the other than if we're in the same column. But if we get... If, um, if we have this guy standing here blocking Har, then Har has to, like, juke left and then like, juke back to the right, and that expends too much of his movement. But if this guy goes after uh, Titania, then the uh, then we don't have that problem. Uh, and he will go after Titania, because Titania doesn't have a ranged weapon equipped, and Hard does. Okay. 
Um, so the rest of what we're doing here is not super important. Uh, we're just gonna basically try to get Shinon some XP again. Um, so starting off with having him probably, yeah, he can't kill him with the crossbow. So we're gonna have him use a killer bow to just try not to take damage. All right, that works. Shinon has Provoke, I think I mentioned, so they we're trying to use that to, like, get the enemies to attack him rather than Mia. Um, but we're gonna now come down and get the Wind Edge out so that they're not... So the ranged enemies will still want to attack Shinon, and then trade Shinon the crossbow. And then, uh, Rolf is going to shoot one of these guys. So, if I recall correctly, for whatever reason, this guy will run up this... This guy will run up the gap here, and this guy will follow him, and then this guy goes to this one, even though you would think it would be, like, this guy goes to this one. So we're actually going to shoot the one in the middle, um, because if... Depending on, um, where, uh... Like, what these enemies do, we may... Our best kill option for Shinon maybe to run up to this gap and then shoot down it. And then, uh... Riss is just gonna head over here. He's gonna shove Miss forward. We're basically just setting him up to be able to heal in case we need that. We probably won't, but it's, uh... Something that we can do if it comes up. We're gonna shove Riss forward as well. And... Uh... Soren, it doesn't really matter what we do with him. So, I don't know. We'll go over here. I didn't even bother to put a weapon on Brom because it's just like, I don't care. It doesn't matter. is going to kill these couple of paladins, which isn't um, strictly necessary, but uh, it means that they can't, like, block Oscar's path. Titania has pass, but Oscar can't have both pass and savior, so... We also have pass on Raisin, because that might be relevant. It probably won't be, but depending on how exactly the enemies arrange themselves... Yeah, so the, I, I mentioned that the thing about, like, having to juke left and then juke back right. To be clear, like, I, I guess I don't actually know for sure whether it's... Well, no, I do, because I tried this with hard not having the hand axe equipped, and yeah, the, the, when this guy went was here, then this warrior did go straight this way, but for whatever reason, with this configuration, he goes up to the top, and that's why, like, even though this guy is here, we can still, like, get around him. Um... So, we are going to do that. Har is going to come down here and take this guy out. And then get right there. And then uh, we're going to have Oscar drop off Heather. And then go right there. And Titania is going to come over here and... There is a guy with a coin around here somewhere. I'm just gonna try to find where that guy is, just in case. Uh, there's a guy with a vulnerary, but that's he's out of reach anyway. There he is. Oh, he's down here. Okay, never mind. Wait, there's no reason to expend Titania's weapons to like get XP or anything. We're just gonna heal. I don't actually think uh, the boss does enough damage for that to be a problem, but I'm not positive and too lazy to check. Okay, so. Now, yeah, we need uh, race in one space further forward. Who's in range to do that? Rom, you're in range to do that. Boosh. And now we can chant.
And now Heather's gonna come down and steal the energy drop. And now we need to get Heather out of the way, which is why it's important that Oscar be part of this chant, which is part of what makes this complicated. Like, if we could have Oscar attack this turn, like, even for two damage, right? Which he could, like, he could do two damage. Whoa, spin, spin, spin. Uh, then we wouldn't have needed to give the energy drop to Har, but because he has to rescue, he can't actually do that. So. Um, now, before we attack with Titania, in case she activates Soul, we want to do some other stuff, specifically with Shinon and Mia. So let's see. How does this look for Shinon? Yeah, that's definitely a kill. Um, Mia would like to be healed if she's going to go for that kill. Um, I don't think there's any way she's killing this guy. So... And then Shinon doesn't deal as much damage to those guys. So, yeah. The other possibility, actually, though, is that we can use Rolf to get a Ballista shot in on one of these guys and get him into range. Yeah, let's do that. Never mind. Thanks, Rolf. Okay. <laughs> I was trying to save a charge on my Physics Staff, Rolf. Come on. Is that enough? That is not enough. All right, well, Mia should still have enough damage to do this, but uh, yeah, we need to, we need to heal her. So let's do that. Annoying. Maybe it's not even worth it, right? I mean, this gets her to, Oh, actually, I didn't look at... Oh, that guy would have done enough damage, too. But maybe she can use, like... Steel Blade on this guy. Yeah, okay. Oh, maybe she could have killed the, uh... Now that Rolf opened the way for her, maybe she could have killed the, uh... Bow Paladin. And not needed to be healed. Oops! Optimization failure. Alright, let's, uh... Let's attack something with Soren. Why not? Let's go attack down left gate. Alright. Um, anything else we want to do? I guess we could heal with mist. Why not? Big level. Um, one other thing we can do. So there is... There's an Olivia Grass here. There's a coin here. And there's a coin... Here, we've not put ourselves in a position to go for the coin here. Um, I don't think there was any way to do so. That void can't get to that. But we can go for the coin over here. Or, sorry, for the Olivi Grass with, uh, Nephany. No dice. And then the one over here, if we can take this guy out with Ike, which we almost certainly cannot do... Um, we could send Gatchery down the ledge. If not, I guess we can just kill the guy. I guess we attack with the Edder so that we can maybe crit. Okay, no coin for me. That's fine. In the Japanese version, there's a Master Crown down here. I... Would, or not here. I would, man, I would feel bad about <laughs> about that whole situation uh, if I had to deal with, like, trying to get somebody all the way down there to pick that up, because I'd really want to, but then, like, yeah. Fortunately, that's not a, not a, something we have to deal with. Uh, Alright, so yeah, we're gonna attack uh, Lombroso here. Uh, it's worth noting that the only reason we're able to even do this is because we got plus one damage on this forge. So if we attack with this guy, we don't do enough damage. So we gotta trade that, and now we do enough damage. I actually did roll for a f um, I guess I should put up my turn counter. Two turns. Um, but I actually did roll for a, a new forge to see whether I would get a, like a plus might forge. 
and uh, not need to give Har the energy drop, but instead I got plus hit, so... Uh, unfortunately, not an option to do that. Anyway, that will do it for this chapter. Overall, a pretty easy chapter. I mean, the the getting the configuration of units exactly right to, to get the kill on Lombroso is not trivial um, because of just where the enemies position themselves, but but it, it, it compared to some of the uh, other recent chapters, this was much easier to figure out. Um, but next up, we have got... Uh-oh, back to the Dawn Brigade. So, thanks for watching, and until next time...